going on guys welcome back so I was in middle school and it first started where I started getting the one-itis the old one-itis disease and a lot of guys on this channel ask me about how do they go about approaching a girl that they like at their school how do they get into a relationship and I want you guys to know is that the one-itis has got to be banished from your life. One-itis is just a cope for trying to, you know, fulfill a desire that you haven't been able to fill. So what is it? What do we go to? We go to the we go to the woman that could possibly give us that pleasure that we need, that validation that maybe our mother never gave us that warm, fuzzy feeling. You know, thinking about her holding you. Maybe thinking about having sex. And it all sounds so good and seductive, but it's an illusion. Alright, it's an illusion. You guys gotta understand that. Nothing's gonna fill up that void in your life. Other than you finding something greater, something more meaningful than yourself. Alright, I've talked to you about finding God being stoic, finding purpose. That is the only thing, all right? And uh, it's a trap, man. You don't want to go for the girl with golden hair. Metaphorically speaking, I've been there. I've, I've, I've wasted a lot of time. I don't want you guys to do that. You guys in middle school, high school, let it be known that you got to like shift your focus. You got to study hard. You got to start working. Okay. I know it's different. I know we're on separate paths. Some basic things, you know, focus, man, on your studies. Don't worry about what the world's doing. What it seems like all your friends are doing. People are in high school. Their dad's getting them a Dodge Charger and stuff. They're not working. Dude, go to fucking work. You know, work at the pizza shop. Need some dough. Be delivery, you know, now's the time to get that hustle bone, to start working, to start getting your body turning into a machine. We're going to talk about that a little bit better, but now's the time, man. Middle school, high school, buckle down, focus. That way you can already start. I wish, man, I was a little bit more keen or a little sharper when it came to what am I going to do after school, already building that instead of just, you know, being kind of an idiot, playing video games at eight playing video games at 18. It took my life. It took God, you know, whacking my life like a pinata for me to kind of wake up and become a man. And that's the thing for us men is that there's no transition phase from boyhood to manhood. No one's there telling you. Now you're a man. They're not branding you. There's no tribe of leaders, elders, Taking you out into the forest and letting you get your first kill. You know, a deer. Nothing like that. Reminds me of Atreus in God of War. When do you become a man? Is it when you grow older, your parents die? Is it when you move out? Is it when you get your first job? There's no, there's no, it's not that swift. But it is a, it's a, you know, it happens. I think moving out for a, a lot of us young men actually teaches us we got to face life head on. When you're paying bills, when you're grocery shopping, you're waking yourself up, you're doing your own laundry, you know, you get a girl to come over to your place instead of having to sneak her in and worry about, you know, your mama coming upstairs. That teaches you a lot, you know, it makes you more courageous, more disciplined. Uh, so the middle school experience, the high school experience kind of, Setting you up, are you just going to be like everyone else in your group? I think a lot of older gentlemen can relate to this too. You know, a lot of time wasting. A lot of lack of taking care of themselves. Um, you know, when they had this chance to become smart and knowledgeable about the world, we kind of waste it. I don't want you guys doing that. I was in middle school and I remember this girl, man, Kelly. Beautiful girl. Very nice body. You know, I can say that because I was in middle school at the time. Very nice body. Um, 
and uh, I really liked her. I had caught my own case of the one-itis. She didn't really notice me, though, because I kind of hung out on the outskirts. And there was this one guy, Giovanni, the cool kid, the popular kid. He was fit. He, uh, he had his together. You know, he wore these polos. He had his hair kind of spiked back with gel. Giovanni, dude, still remember him to this day. And uh, Kelly liked him. Because I never approached her. I never had the nuts to approach her. So guys that are out there and you got this one-itis, get over the one-itis by making her a human. Go and approach her. Stop waiting. Stop dreaming about her. You start dreaming about her at the first semester. It's the end of the school year. You're still wondering what if. All right. So go and approach her. Get out of your system and uh, overcome that fear. I never approached her, man. I would just kind of hang around, you know, with all the other kids, just kind of watching what happens. And what ended up happening, I got a lot of the girls, you know, you didn't want to get. A lot of the middle school slum dogs that were just kind of, you know, just, they were showing me attention. I was like, oh, man. So, you got to get over the one eyes. We got to... Yeah, man, we keep going. We keep on going. And um, I've noticed for a lot of men, we're still doing that soul searching into our older years. We're 20, 25, 30, 35, even 40, man. It don't end until you figure out what's going to fill that void. So the stoic philosophy has become, you know, a staple of this channel. And I hope that you guys can do, can begin to develop your own relationship with God in silence being okay being alone being okay stepping back looking at the bigger picture suffering if you need to but also getting up and doing what it takes all right and I've realized that what a lot of us need to do is get out of our heads and we've got to move down into the body we've got to come down into here and experience what it's like to live in the body of a man. We got data overload. All right. We got emotion overload all in here. We have to almost take all this info, let it come in, let it go out, and get back down into the body. All right. You're not going to die. And we become so up here. We're emotional, man. We're, we, and then it just causes everything to be chaotic. We're living in a cyclone. Right in the middle. And when I say come back into the body, if you have the ability, you've got to develop this thing. You've got to make it healthy. You've got to trim the fat. Literally speaking, we got to get rid of all this excess fat. Because when you're carrying it around, it's slowing you down. It's affecting your brain. It's uh, you're, you're having more estrogen in your body. Okay, if you're not working out, you're not doing some sort of physical fitness, your, your uh, endurance is not up, you're only holding yourself back, man. Life gets a lot easier when you make this thing a weapon. Like the Aussie bro say, he, uh, you're a unit, mate. You know, make yourself a unit. That's what we need to become. Because we can. Not just out of, for this aesthetic look, not just to get the girls, no, but so that we can get up in the morning, we can do the work. It's incredible. I've had a lot of you guys tell me the garlic challenge we just started doing. You guys started doing it, man, and you would wake up in the morning, your wiener feels like it's come alive. Yeah, dude, that's right. That's how it feels to be horny. We got a lot of, you know, I could get into all the estrogen, all the food and stuff. I don't really want to, um, but that's what the choice comes to eat healthy, all right? Myself, I've been trying to do a cardio 10 minutes, 15 minutes at the end of every workout. So I'm working out five, six times a week. And then I'm going on the stair stepper and I'm doing some hit and I'm moving. And then maybe I'm stretching and I'm sitting in the sauna. You know, I'm not saying become obsessed, but you can't spend an hour a day making sure that this thing becomes beast-like. That's going to transfer into a more clear mind. You're going to be able to any like challenges in life, I'm telling you, it's, you're going to feel confident like a warrior. And that's what we need to do is we need to unlock the inner warrior in us. 
like I said, no one's telling us you're a man now. No one's telling us you're a warrior now. We haven't been through that training, so we have to cha train ourselves really. Become unlocking that inner warrior. You unlock the body. You make it, you know, this uh, powerhouse, this unit, and that's gonna make you be able to step up to any challenge, dude. The warrior spirit comes alive when things are hard, when things are tough. Instead of playing victim, having that mentality, it's like, no, man, I can take care of this. All right, I can handle this stuff. I'm, I'm grown. Like, I, dude, it's just I can't really explain it. It's more of a feeling of getting into the body and getting out of here. All right, you stop worrying about the Jews. You stop worrying about women and you know how evil they are and their nature. You, you just, you get back on the narrow path. When you fail, you know we're trying to juggle all these habits. You get back on. You correct. Stop playing God. Stop judging every single thing, every single failure. You just get back on, okay? You you get back going, and man, you just you start hitting your goals. You know, you start you start just seeing life get better, man. All right, that's really what it's all about, okay? So let's get into our bodies and uh, use them. Let me know what you guys would like to hear. You know, maybe you're hearing some thoughts on this video and uh, thinking what I'm saying. Hopefully. You, it uh, can you can relate to some of this stuff. All right. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.